Q102, the Delta's number one hit music station. Good morning. It is 7.54. Showers and thunderstorms in our forecast for today. 89 for a high. It is uh, currently 76 here at Q102. We'll have your full forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Well, uh, joining me here on the show this morning, I am uh, privileged to be with a gentleman by the name of Brian Flowers, who is uh, uh, he's, he's running to be representative for the 2nd Congressional District. Uh, good morning, Brian. Morning. Uh, how, how, how are you on this fine morning? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Fine as wine in the summertime. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, uh, before we really get into it, uh, tell us tell us a little bit about you. What I mean, what uh, your history, that kind of thing. Okay. Well, I, I was actually born and raised in North Carolina, um, a small small town, population five hundred people. Uh, a lot of a lot like a lot of the small towns here in in the Delta. Yeah. But um, I grew up there. Um, was raised a Southern Baptist. Um, joined the Navy after I graduated high school. Okay. I served in the Navy for over 10 years. Wow. I uh, got out as a uh, first class petty officer, E6. Um, wow. During my time there, I served on two different ships. The uh, USS Trenton LPD-14, mm -hmm. which is an amphibious assault ship. Right. Uh, served out of her, on her out of Norfolk, Virginia, and re-enlisted and went over to San Diego, California and got on board the USS John C. Stennis. Okay. Uh, which is an aircraft carrier. Yep. And I actually met my wife on the aircraft carrier. Uh, I was a mechanic, she was an electrician. So uh, during our Westpac deployment, we got to be, we were on the same duty section, same watch team. So whenever we went out in town, we were each other's liberty buddies. So we got to be, we got to go see places like Malaysia, Australia, Japan, all these different places while we were engaged mm -hmm. about a year before we actually got married. Um, after the Navy, I went and got uh, got out of the Navy and started working for the Navy, as, but this time as a civilian, I worked at uh, the Naval Underwater Warfare Center in Keyport, Washington. Okay. Um, a lot of different top secret things going on there, but uh, after that, I uh, made my way over to Columbia Generating Station, mm -hmm. uh, which is a nuclear power plant up in Richland, Washington. Um, spent about four years there, and then uh, got down here to Grand Gulf Nuclear Station uh, in Port Gibson. Been here for about six and a half years. Um, we absolutely love it down here. My family and I have made this home, um, especially with my family being in North Carolina and my wife's family in Kansas. We were in the perfect spot to be where if we had to be, get to either one of the families for only 11 and a half hours, from each family. Right, right. So right. we are in the perfect spot. So we're not moving anytime soon. I think it says a lot about you. Uh, not only did you enlist, you enlisted twice because you wanted to serve the country. Yes, sir. I, I have nothing but total respect for that at all. I mean, I just, it, it gives me goosebumps. My hair stands up because, you know, uh, your heart drove you to, to, to re enlist. I mean, most people they, they get in and, and then you know they serve their country and they're out and they you know, you know work on their uh, whatever job they're going to do that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But uh, you went back, you went back. I went and, and I and I did go back and, and I actually loved the military. My um, my family and uh, my my wife's family actually is chock full of military background. Okay, uh, I've got uh, my grandfather, great uncles were all in World War Two. Uh, via the Navy or the Air Force. Um, my father was in Vietnam. My uncle was in the Army as well. Yeah. Me and my brother both joined the Navy. My sister joined the Army. Uh, my wife's side of the family. Uh, it's, her brother was a Marine. She was in the Navy. Her sister was in the Army. So both both sides of the family are heavy military history. Um, let me let me ask you this. Um, yeah. So what what turned on you to, to want to get into politics, to, to, to want to be represented for the second congressional district? My kids. Um, that, that's the, about the shortest answer I have. Uh, we can get into a whole long Yeah, answer, yeah, I, I, was uh, just, I was just curious what it, what it was, because usually there's there's something, you know, that, that, that causes somebody to say, you know what, I want to start doing this. Well, it's my children. Okay. Because I look around at what we have in the district right now, huh? we have failing school districts, our infrastructure is non-existent and has been lacking for and just ignored for the last 20 some odd years. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it, you just, if well, we don't, if we don't do something now to change the course, yeah, we're not going to have anything to give our children. Well, let me ask you this: What would you do about the the failing infrastructure? Well, the failing infrastructure needs to be evaluated. Um, it needs to have. You know, we, we just don't need to go in here willy nilly and spend all kinds of money for stuff that we don't need. It needs to be the roads need to be evaluated. What roads need to be repaired? What bridges need to be repaired? Is our electrical grid in good shape? If it's not, what needs to be repaired with it? And that's where the Army Corps of Engineers comes in. You know, we get the we get the report from them. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. And we go in and we make the changes that we need to make to bring our infrastructure back to where. We can bring businesses in and we can bring the different uh the but the buses aren't being destroyed on their routes so now um something that, that is very important especially in the minds of, of parents and we were just talking about kids uh your kids mm -hmm. uh education uh what would you do differently uh to, to better our education uh, system okay so a lot of a lot of uh politicians they go up to dc and they, they say well i know i know what we need to do i know what we need to do the problem is is that if they're a lawyer which most of them are yeah uh they're, they're not an educator to be honest with you they don't know squat on what to do what needs to happen is we need to have a, a team of educators go in and look at various spots and figure out what needs to happen and then take Clinton and Madison, for instance. Mm -hmm. Clinton School District, Madison School District have A rating school districts. Right. You have other school districts, some of which are here in the Delta, some of which are down in, uh, you know, a little bit further south in the, in the southern part of the district, that have failing school districts. Right. We need to look at what is it that Madison and Clinton are doing that the other school districts aren't doing figure out what the delta is there, and then see if we can't bridge a, the gap and correct the issues at hand. Another thing is, and I've been talking to a lot of teachers and, and uh, principals and things like that, and basically, a lot of it has to do with the attitude. If we can bring, and this kind of goes right back to infrastructure. You get infrastructure coming up, uh, and you get it back in where it needs to be, yeah. to where we can bring more businesses in, and increase uh, job opportunities and be able to increase the, uh, the, the pride, more or less, of the community because they have good paying jobs, they have somewhere nice to live, they have all these different things. It's gonna change the attitude of the community itself, yeah. which is gonna give the schools a lot better chance to, the students will share that attitude as well and be willing to learn and move forward. But we need to figure out what, what exactly is it that is it that we're not paying our teachers enough to where we're not getting, and I'm not saying we don't have good quality teachers, right. they, they are on the front lines, but so, you know, what, what is it that's wrong? Yeah. I, you know, we need to figure out what the Delta is because there's something that Clinton and Madison are doing that the other schools aren't. Right. But I think a big thing is, is a lot of places are just run down and you know, Need, they, they all need to be brought up. The community needs to be built back up. The schools need to be built back up just to have a sense of pride. Sure. sure. I mean, pride has a lot to do with your attitude. You know, a, another big issue, of course, is uh, the unemployment rate. And, 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 and kind of get your, get your mind here. How, how would you lower the unemployment rate right here in District 2? Okay, so that kind of goes back to what we were just talking about with bringing businesses in. Yeah getting the infrastructure in place and everything revolves around the infrastructure but bringing the you know wanting to bring uh, businesses in that's where you know being up in DC I want to be able to put bills forward that are going to provide incentives for small uh, business owners mm -hmm. to be able to start a business and then not only to be able to start a business but to be able to hire multiple employees right you know maybe not a whole shop worth 10 people but if they can hire two three four employees that's two three four more um, people out there that have a job plus like I said once we get our uh, infrastructure built back up we can bring other businesses in whether it's processing plants manufacturing plants whatever we can bring those in which one those are going to take a couple years to build just like the tire company did down in uh, right outside of Clinton. Right. Um, so there's construction jobs there. 
there's once we get it built and it's online now we have uh, a manufacturing or a processing plant that's going to hire several hundred uh, people just to uh, operate their their business yeah which is going to bring more jobs to the uh, more jobs to the district it's going to lower the unemployment rate and it's going to increase the revenue of our district I've said this before our district is should be a powerhouse we have the only nuclear power plant in the entire state. Mm -hmm. We have multiple other power plants, whether it's coal burning or uh, gas powered. We have the tire uh, factory. We have agriculture here up in the Delta. We have all the specialty, yeah, I know at least around my area and I know all of the other areas have their own specialty areas, but like around Madison, you have all the lawyers, you have all the specialty doctors. Yeah. We have so much going for us that we should be leading the entire state in revenue, yet we are the poorest district out there. Yeah, that's, uh, it, you, you start thinking about that, it's a little depressing, but uh, in, in agreeing what you're saying, we need, we need, we, we've got to do something. We've got to turn it around. And as you're, as you're explaining you know, what you want to do, it gets me kind of excited as well. You know what I mean? To actually, because you've honed in on it, you've kind of figured that out. So, um, I tell you, you know, just sitting on the back porch, <clears throat> excuse me, sitting on the back porch, my wife, we were sitting there looking at this and talking about it. You know, this is probably mid to late last year and uh, before I threw my name in the hat. But, uh, you know, we, we sat there and we started naming all the stuff that needs to be fixed. And we got to looking at the, the years past. Nobody even ran against Benny Thompson last election cycle. No, I, that was a little weird. So, I mean, you know, if nobody's going to step up and do it, me being in the military, it's kind of one of the things that, you know, that I always, you know, tended to do. Yeah. Um, you know, basically, if nobody else is going to stand up and do it, I'll do it. Because if nobody ever says enough is enough and steps up and is willing to make that sacrifice, and this is a sacrifice because... I work at a nuclear power plant. I, write, I have a very good job there. Yeah. But I am ready to sacrifice whatever it takes to make this place a better place to live for everyone in the uh, in District 2. Not just a certain group here or a certain group that, no, everybody. Because when everybody succeeds, we all, you know, the, the district does better. Right. You know, one thing I was, I was brought up uh, and taught is we're all in this together. If we, don't, if, if we don't pull together and act as a team, we'll fail. And that's evident right now. We're, we're split. Uh, the country right now is split very hard, uh, a hard line split. But we need to pull together, put, the, put it aside whatever differences we may have, and let's get this place running, and then we can go back and revisit what what the problems that you know any other problems that may be out there yeah well uh, again uh, talking to you this morning uh, uh, you're really pumping me up you're getting me excited and I, I think that people really 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 need to uh, to think you know do we want to fix things or do we just want to you know set on cruise control and just accept you know the hardship and and I, I see nothing but ideas and brightness talking to you and and I hope that people will, will kind of soak up what you're saying this morning. Because again, uh, you've got me excited. And I uh, look forward to the, uh, to the race. And I, I, and I hope you, uh, you get in there and uh, people, people will uh, vote their hearts and do the right thing. And one thing I will ask the, the listeners to do, and it doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican, don't vote the party line. Look at both candidates. Brian Flowers, Benny Thompson. Look at both candidates and do some research on them. Vote for the person, not for the party. Because when, when you vote for just strictly party lines and you don't do your research on, uh, on the person, you're not sure what you're gonna get. So do your research on that person, vote for, that, vote for the person that you feel is the best qualified person to be in office. And if it's Brian Flowers, great. If, it, if you feel Benny Thompson is, is your choice, then vote for, you have that right to vote yeah. for whoever you want to. But at least do the research on the person. Now, speaking of research on person, anybody that wants to uh, look me up, 
You can go, I have a Facebook account. You can go to Brian Flowers for Congress on Facebook. Uh, I have a list of all, uh, a biography on what, where I grew up and things like that, and as well as where I stand on different topics. It has a list of all the different posts and videos that I've put up so far. Uh, I also have a website that people can go to at www.flowersforcongress.com. Again, it has a lot of the same information that Facebook does, but because I'm on Facebook a lot more than I am uh, on my website, right. there, there, it's going to be a little bit more detailed and ha maybe have a little bit more information. All right. Well, uh, again, uh, thank you for stopping by, uh, Brian. Folks, again, Brian Flowers, he's, uh, he's running for the uh, representative for the 2nd Congressional District. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by and uh, look forward to uh, th good things to happen in the future. I appreciate that uh, time. All right. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, actually uh, 810. We've got uh, more of today's hit music all on the way. Keep it right here. Q102.